All right, folks, what do you think of the new intro? I hope you like it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I'm very excited that that's finally live. Uh, it, I've known about this uh, for a week or so now, but since I schedule my videos so far in advance, I haven't been able to use it yet. Um, so like, I'm super happy that uh, I'm going to have an intro for these videos starting today. All right, so hello, I'm Phil Gallagher of Thraben U, and today we are going to be playing with Grox LEDless Dredge. So in case you're not overly familiar with Dredge, Lion's Eye Diamond is the LED in question here. And this is sort of a budget slash alternative take on Dredge. And instead of playing the Lion's Eye Diamonds, you're playing Tireless Tribe, which lets you discard a card to give it plus zero plus four. Ignore the stats on this card. This is just something that lets us discard a card repeatedly. Now, why does this matter? Something like Putrid Imp is really interesting in Dredge because it allows you to recycle the same dredger repeatedly. So like, imagine this scenario. You play Careful Study, you discard one dredger, you dredge with it, and then you miss on hitting another dredger. All of a sudden, your progress has stopped and you're not really doing your thing anymore until you find a way to discard or until you go and find some other card like a Faithless Looting or something like that. So instead of doing that, we're playing Tireless Tribe, and now we have seven ways of recycling our best dredgers, and this means that we get a little bit more oomph out of our Golgari Grave Trolls than a normal, more traditional dredge build. Um, I'm excited to see how this plays out. Um, I do think that there's a weird choice here. I think it's a little weird to have Ox of Agonos in this deck, because this is something that plays so well with LED, you crack it for triple red, you exile a bunch of cards from your graveyard, and like you just do the thing with the ox. But I might just be wrong, and this might still be pretty good even without it. I've sorted the dredge cards here into a couple of conceptual categories. So column one is our mana sources, and we have two lotus, lotus petals to just go a little faster. We have our ways of getting cards into graveyards. We have our dredgers, and then with these two piles, these are the things that are good once we've started, you know, essentially milling ourselves and just dredging through our deck and dumping all sorts of cards into graveyards. We don't have any sort of combo finish here. Um, we don't have a main deck dread return and something like a flare of the hatebound to just go and get an instant kill. We're looking to grind our opponent out uh, via Icarids and zombie tokens and narcamoebas over a couple of turns. We might end up being a little bit less explosive than normal dredge just because of the absence of LED. The sideboard of dredge decks tends to be pretty targeted. All you want to do as a dredge deck basically is stop your opponent's interaction. And so we're going to see things like Leyline of Sanctity that give you hexproof, things like Nature's Claim or Wisp Mare to go and answer things that, you know, are, are like rest in pieces and graft diggers cages that are permanent based interaction. And this deck does have a little bit more interaction than what I'm used to seeing because we also have some things like Memories Journey um, that can go and snipe something like, I don't know, say an Oko if that's something that you wanted to do. Um, I don't know exactly how I feel about this sideboard. Normally when I see Dredge sideboards, you're playing more copies of the same cards because you just really care about having that Nature's Claim effect in your opening hand or something like that. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye on like how many of these cards I actually sideboard over the course of the league and whether or not I feel like this sideboard is optimal. All right, let me know what you think of the list, and I hope you enjoy. Um, but more so than anything else today, throw me, throw me comments about that intro and let me know what you think and if you're as excited about it as I am. Let's battle. Um, I'm on the play here, and my first opening hand does not have a land, so I need to ship this one back, unfortunately. If I was on the draw, I could consider keeping this. Ah, uh, so this is the, like, living on a prayer hand, where if I hit a dredger in the top three cards of my library, this hand is very good, otherwise it's quite bad. Um, I think I'm gonna go to five. Yeah, this hand's fine. Pitch an Icarid here and one of my lands. Goal is turn one Tireless Tribe. I'll use that to discard a Golgari Grave Troll and then I'll go ham from there. Ah, 
<laughs> Houston, we have dredging. I, I actually might need an upkeep stop in this deck. I'm going to set that before that bites me in the butt. There's some weird things you might need to do, like activate a Cephalid Coliseum or like discard a black card for an Icarid. All right, you, you need to be silenced real quick. All right, my opponent thought for a very long time, like a minute, and then uh, played Verdant Catacombs. Oh, okay, so we're playing against Depths. So we're just going to go fast. Hopefully go fast. My Tireless Tribe is going to get named. Although there is a world where Cephalid Coliseum gets named instead. Okay, yeah, it took my opponent a second, but they eventually named Cephalid Coliseum. So since they shut that off, I will get to just keep reusing this Golgari Grave Troll. I cast a Breakthrough for X equals 1 here and keep some card. I think I will do that. Crop rotation for Bojukabog would kind of suck, but... Don't think I'm going to play around that here. Oh, yeah. Always yes to these, always yield to these. Alright, so my opponent does have the Bojuka Bog, unfortunately. I lose a lot of gas here. Crash in for one. So I'll still just be able to make a, like, put another Golgari Grave Troll into my graveyard. And probably just kill my opponent anyway. I've lost two bridges. I've lost some amount of dredgers. Right, my opponent is getting Thespian stage, which means their hand is a little slower than mine. Alright, there's a bridge from below. There's an ox that I can't pay the cost for, because Cephalid Coliseum makes blue mana. Alright, tap for one. My opponent theoretically could make a spirit, uh, make a merit lodge this turn if they have a spirit guide. I suppose it's technically correct to do this on my turn, but whatever. Still can't cast this ox. Double red here is rough. Um, I get an Icarid as of next turn, and then I have two bridge from belows, which is cool. Um, but I might just die.
I have one Narc Amoeba left in my deck. I exiled three of them previously. I can get one Flying Blocker easily. From there, it's harder. I'll dump these in the graveyard now. That's fine. I assume this thing just gets shut off. Alright, so my opponent now can produce a Marilage this turn. Dunk a Golgari Thug to get this. Six looks for a Narc Amoeba. I have missed, unfortunately. Uh, which means that I am dead. My opponent taps 1-2, creates a 20-20, and I died that. That's game one. Okay. How do I want to play the post sideboard games? I have to worry about Bojuka Bog. And I don't know that I'm going to sideboard very much for this. Like, I can think about a ley line of sanctity to protect from discard. I can think about Pithing Needle to stop their effects. Um, but I don't think I want to board too much. I can think about the Dread Return and Ashen Rider, so that if my opponent just floops a Marilage into play, I have something I can do from the graveyard to actually beat it. Um, if I do that, I probably want to sideboard four cards. I took just a second to look at a couple of depths lists, and it seems like Surgical Extraction is sort of the uh, favorite... Um, graveyard hate right now. And so a lot of my things like memories, or I'm sorry, like Nature's Claim and Wistmare are probably not going to come in here. Uh, I think I'm going to board these four. Take the Hogak out. Ashen Rider fills a similar but slightly different role. I'll maybe trim one therapy since I'm bringing in something else that can sacrifice my creatures. And then maybe I go down like one Icarid or something. I could go down one Tireless Tribe. I think that's reasonable as well. Let's try this. Um, so on turn one, I can Cabal Therapy myself and put a Golgari Grave Troll into my graveyard and play a very slow game, but I don't really have a good follow-up play. I think I can do better than this when I'm on the play. Is this better? This has a follow-up play, even though, like, Golgari Thug is not the dredger that I'd really like. I think I'll keep this hand. I'll pitch the redundant Putrid Imp here. My opponent is going to have a lot of interaction for me, uh, unfortunately, between surgical and crop rotation and things like Sylvan Scrying. Um, so what I'm doing is not necessarily safe. If I can get some cards in the graveyard and keep them there, my Cephalid Coliseums can do so, so much work. But until then, um, life's not great. Alright, my Putrid Imp has been shut off. See if I just get surgical here, it would be quite bad. 
Yep. All right. Uh, much to be done. Um, I now do not expect to win this game. Uh, like, we can maybe just, like, YOLO a breakthrough and hope it works out, but... Sort of my opponent, like, forgetting my dredger in the graveyard. Uh, life's bad. The number of counters on gemstone mine also could become quite relevant. And I don't think I was supposed to do something like board in nature's claim to fight pithing needles, because I think a lot of the time I just play around that fact plenty fine. Oh, hey, a dredger. Life is not a complete disaster. Okay. We have to keep one of these. The careful study is not bad. The tireless tribe is not bad. I think I'm going to keep the careful study specifically because I can use blue mana to do it. Like, I can blue mana careful study and then keep the gemstone mine around to activate the cephalid coliseum later. Oh, there's a pause here. Am I just going to get surgical again? I don't think I get to beat uh, needle, needle surgical surgical in one turn cycle. We'll see, though. Things can happen. Unfortunate. All right, Need needle surgical thought sees bog in one turn cycle. All right, I, like one full turn uh, is pretty rough. Um, guess I'll play this. Not really great. I can keep it specifically for if I draw another breakthrough, but yeah. Uh, that probably just means I'm dead next turn. My opponent makes a 20-20. I can't activate Putrid Imp to have a flyer. You casting this? I'll cast this to buy a turn. That's a treasure in the graveyard at the very least. Plus, we get this sweet trigger that'll destroy Merit Lodge, right? Someone in the YouTube comments is already typing, Well, actually, see, Merit Lodge is indestructible, and Stinkweed's Amp's triggered ability, which is oddly similar to Death Touch, but isn't actually Death Touch, can't kill Merit Lodge accordingly. Womp womp. Every once in a while, like that thing being a triggered ability and not an actual damage like uh like a state-based action is uh relevant oh just just ley line me too i think we can throw in the towel here my opponent has merit lodge next turn like i block once i now don't get to dredge uh i am i'm fine moving to the next game my opponent has so much interaction for me all right i'll be keeping this opening hand I can play a Tireless Tribe on turn one, use that to discard Stinkweed Imp, and then get some sick value. Oh shit. <laughs> oh. Oh. Alright. Game two. I will play three Leyline of the Void. 
and then go from there. Um, Ashen Rider, Dread Return are also okay. I don't think I want the Ox. I think I'll go down one Tireless Tribe. I need to grind a little bit less. I can go down a bridge. Or an Icarid. Maybe just, like, boarding into these is not good. For the next game, it's better for the game that I'm on the draw, I think. Although, on the game on the draw, I would really just like to open with one of my ley lines. I'm going to take out the Hogak. I don't want my opponent to just, like, reanimate that and, like, make an 8-8 for free after I accidentally dredge it. Um, oh, there's also Memory's Journey. I'll play that as well. Oh, now I'm doing like five cards? That's so many cards. Maybe shave one here. And shave one Therapy. Like, I know therapy is fine, but it's going to be a guessing game a lot of the time, and there's not one specific card I'm looking for. There's a handful of things. Leyline, keep, 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 keep. Alright, so now I have a way to dredge six, plus a Cephalid Coliseum that's active once I have seven cards in Graveyard, and I threw down a Ley Line on turn one. Um, my hand's pretty powerful here. Alright, you have a Xantid Swarm. Which, uh, like, I guess technically has some text. I have some memories journeys. All right, pop out graveyard time. Oh, hey, memories journey. All right, now my opponent's Santon Swarm has text. All right, Tireless Tribe. Discolds, discards Golgari Grave Troll, which puts me back to seven cards in discard. I think I just break through this turn and then activate a Cephalid Coliseum next turn. Roll. Roll. Thug. Imp. Roll. Troll. Yep. Okay. Um, I have a memories journey. I didn't hit anything else relevant here. Um, well, all right. I have like bridges and Icarids for next turn. Um, that will be quite good, but I don't have anything else that I can like do this turn other than send in for one. Note to self, I have multiple bridge from belows. Do not block the Xantid Swarm and lose, what, three bridges? Oh. There. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, what is the wording of bridge from below? It is put into an opponent's graveyard from play. Okay, JK, so I can block Xantid Swarm. All right, um, activate Cephalid Coliseum now. No, I don't need to do it now. I can just go ahead and uh, exile a Putrid Imp, and then that's fine. Dredge a Troll, and now I can just Cabal Therapy my opponent a bunch of times and make zombies. That sounds cool. 
guess I can Cephalid Colosseum first. Um, I'll want to discard a Golgari Grave Troll before doing that. All right. I have to actually keep track of the number of cards in my uh, discard pile, or not discard pile, in my library here. Two cards enough. Uh, let's dredge one imp instead and leave one more card in library. Yeah. 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 All right, now let's tread my opponent's hand. I have one, two, three therapies. Yeah. This is fine. I think I can always yield to these. Seems safe enough right now. All right, exhum, exhum, dark ritual, grizzle brand. All right, do the next set, and we'll name dark ritual. You can go ahead and get rid of Tireless Tribe. Actually, it probably doesn't matter too much. Tireless Tribe at least attacks this turn. All right. So now let's go ahead and send in for some damage. Opponent might block, get rid of my bridges. Nope, they're not doing that. Um, I'll keep up Memory's Journey, um, but I don't expect to be able to use it. I mean, thank you for allowing me a, an opportunity to Memory's Journey. Nice. So, I can think about Leyline of Sanctity on the draw, um, but I really think I'm just looking to either have an Explosive Hand or a Leyline. I think either one of those things is acceptable. Um, on the draw, I do want to think about this Dread Return Ashen Rider situation for those times where I can dredge myself for a whole bunch, but my opponent made a fatty. Um, although my opponent reanimating an Ashen Rider is uh, creepy. Let's go ahead and bring these in on the draw. Um, go down another Tireless Tribe. And another therapy on the draw, question mark? I'm not 100% sure on, like, what some of these ratios are. Like, I could see myself going, actually, maybe an Icarid is better, and I keep one more way of getting cards into the graveyard to start with. Yeah, let's try that. Um, but again, like, I am, I am not a, a dredge specialist. I don't have my heuristics down for what I should and should not be doing. This is an okay hand. This is the sort of hand like that I could keep, but if I just go like turn one, careful study, discard two drudgers, and my opponent does their thing, I don't stop them. Um, let's let's fish a little. Well, this one's just worse than the last hand. Uh, 
Uh, this has no functional text. Uh oh, going to four. Hey, all right. This is a very bad hand. This is the sort of hand where, like, I keep a ley line, my opponent keeps a naturalize effect, and I die. All right. Please don't play the Serenity on one. I kept this Cabal Therapy so that I could name Serenity. God damn it. I'd planned around this. All right, so the question is, like, do I just break through this turn and hope for the best, or do I try to Cabal Therapy on, like, an Entomb? I think I tried a Cabal Therapy. I think if I stop in Tomb, it's just so important after my opponent has mulliganed. Nice! <laughs> my opponent's hand was insane, by the way. Just like turn one if I don't have Leyline. And turn two, that beats Leyline if I do have it. YOLO! Find a dredger. Uh oh! YouTubers, do you know what's coming? Because it's very bad. Very, very bad if my opponent sees the, like, quite obvious line. They just animate dead my Ashen Rider, X out my one land, and I die on the spot. Uh, that's, uh, that's really unfortunate that that's how this played out. This was one of those reasons that I was kind of hesitant to board in the Ashen Rider in the first place. All right, yeah. All right. GG. Okay, I'm going to be keeping my opening hand here, but I think I'm going to be a little bit soft to a Force of Will effect. Um, I get to go Cephalid Coliseum, Lotus Petal, Breakthrough for X equals zero, and save Lotus Petal to activate Cephalid Coliseum later. Um, but this is not a hand that will be good if my opponent just like Force of Wills or Force of Negations my turn one breakthrough. And... The blue decks are somewhat likely to be able to do that now, uh, more likely than they used to be. Uh, this is a force check hand, and I actually... I wonder if there's a world where I'm just supposed to play Cephalid Coliseum and Breakthrough, so it's easier for me to hard discard a Golgari Grave Troll. Hey, are you the Thraben University creator? I am! Good luck. All right. Lotus Petal. Coliseum. Breakthrough. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go! Don't bojuka bog me. I will make sad trombone noises. Um... Because of Cabal Therapy, I should probably just go ahead and activate this now.
Impy. Rolly. Impy. Yes, I will use this ability. I have a Cabal Therapy in Graveyard and three Bridge from Below's. There's a pause here, which means that my opponent could have something like a Once Upon a Time. What do I actually care about? And do I get a second chance? Uh, I do have another Cabal Therapy. I think this is a card that's very likely to be in my opponent's deck, so I'm going to name this first. Oh, we are versing Infect. Uh, it turns out Brainstorm would have been a sick name. My opponent will brainstorm. I don't know that I'm supposed to Cabal Therapy. I just lose a body here. My opponent also had a daze and just, like, did not... Daze. I guess that's fine. Um, I can just get dazed for the second therapy at the cost of a creature, though. I think I just passed the turn here. I don't need to therapy myself. <clears throat> Opponent not willing to potentially brainstorm lock themselves here. I expect to see fetch tropical island brainstorm and play out an infect creature. My opponent's days will probably be pretty good. They can take my next therapy. Although I'm pretty much hoping to kill my opponent on the following turn. <clears throat> we'll see. Like, I have six guaranteed power plus whatever I can do from a dredge. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't bad. I haven't looked at the rest yet, but that's pretty sick. Yeah, I have another therapy. Let's go Cabal Therapy, target you. Sacrifice a Narcomoeba. Oh, from that bridge from below until end of turn? Yeah, okay. That's fine. That protects my opponent's Berserk, which gives them potential to combo kill me. <clears throat> Alright, I have no other Cabal Therapies. I do have lethal amounts of damage. So, I think I throw both Narc Amoebas in front of the boss if my opponent attacks. Okay, yeah, we didn't even get to that point. We just killed our opponent. Okay, um, what sort of graveyard hate am I expecting out of Infect? Probably Surgical. I'm going to pause the video for a second and just take a look. Um, looks like there's multiple options. Sometimes there's a small crop rotation package, and sometimes there's Surgical Extraction. And other options do exist. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to board very much here. Probably just two Pithing Needles. Well, do I do I actually even care about Ink Moth Nexus? Like, do I want to board in any interaction? Or are we just, like, racing each other?
I think Ashen Rider becomes interesting as a way to exile an infect thre threat that's played out. I think I want Ashen Rider and Dread Return, but I don't want to try Pithing Needle for Ink Moth. That's just trying to be too controlling, and I just want my opponent dead. Um, go down one of these, or maybe the Hogak. I don't know, the Hogak's just a big body that I can cast from the graveyard. Let's try this. Now, this is the third combo deck that I've gotten paired against in a row, and I'm really missing my LEDs for these matchups. Um, with this hand, I can play a Putrid Imp around a daze. And I'm pretty good against Surgical. I have two different dredgers. I'll go ahead and keep this. It's not necessarily the most explosive hand in the world. Uh, it looks like my opponent is mulliganing pretty aggressively. They're going to five currently. Um, be awkward for me if I get leylined. That's something that my opponent's build is playing. Um, but until I see that, or some juke like it, I don't think I want to board for it. Alright, my opponent did keep on five. Don't have to worry about our damage from City of Brass in this one. Alright, it really feels like my opponent has Surgical. So I think I'm going to discard Stinkweed Imp first. And try to dredge that, even though it's a less optimal line if they don't have Surgical. That way I can keep my trolls around. Like, my opponent mulled to five and did not keep an aggressive hand that, like, played a Glistener Elf on turn one or a Blighted Agent on turn two. That just screams, I have surgical extraction to me in all sorts of different languages. No shuffle off the ponder. My opponent pulls out Glistener Elf. Alright, so my opponent didn't surgical in response. So I think I can go ahead and dump the Grave Troll now. They could have just uh, done it in response to that trigger. Okay, there is a Cabal Therapy. <clears throat> I can discard two Bridge from Below's Cabal Therapy my opponent after discarding some Grave Trolls and just, like, play the game that way. What do I name with Cabal Therapy? Berserk, probably. I just really thought my opponent had Surgical. Huh. Interesting. I don't, I don't know that this is wrong. It's just interesting timing. Like, I would have expected that my opponent would have... 
going for the dredgers to slow me down this turn because they don't need very many turns to win. I guess this works too. Okay, my opponent had some sort of issue for a minute there. Um, I can still Cabal Therapy them. I feel like I probably should. Like, this Putrid Imp on its own isn't particularly useful anymore. I don't know. Like, this thing can't block. It is still just 2 damage a turn. It's a way to recycle my dredgers. Maybe I don't. Like, it might be more relevant to have Putrid Imp's body around as a third creature if I mill over two Narc Amoebas so that I can Dread Return the Ashen Rider and exile a creature. Oh, well, there's a Hogak. That's nice. Um, hopefully I can uh, find a Nicarit or something and get that into play. Can't block, so in we go. Could get Berserked. That would be cool. Opponent's pausing. Nope, okay, it's nothing. We're starting to think about crop rotation. Don't have too much time to, uh, Turn things around here. Next turn starts to be the turn where I start to just look at being dead. Man, just could have really used an Archimiba there. Okay. Uh, I can make a Hogak next turn, but I, I expect that I'm just dead here. My opponent has two cards in hand that they haven't uh, started to play yet. And I don't know that I can get away with uh, sacrificing the Putrid Imp, because dumping that Ashen Rider into play seems like one of the only ways that I'm going to find the time I need to win. Yeah, alright, scale up, 6-4, six, 7 infect damage this turn, uh, and I am just dead to that. That's okay. Uh, so I get another game here. I don't think I'll change anything with how I'm sideboarded. Just gonna go ahead and resubmit. I have what is in my mind a mediocre hand. I can put a Golgari Thug into the graveyard on turn one, as well as one other thing, but... Um, I don't think this hand is super explosive. I'm going to go ahead and mulligan. My opponent is playing a fast deck. Um, and now I've been rewarded with a hand that does not have any dredgers, unfortunately. Um, this one is going to need to go back. Uh... Are we at Lotus Petal Breakthrough already? Hey, this is five. I might be there already. Um, I really don't like this hand, but I think this is where I'm at. 
possible I should keep a putrid imp so that if my lotus petal breakthrough gets this uh countered I can still do something if I top deck a land but I also think I need both of these dredgers in a lot of worlds I'm not super super hopeful here Alright, if my opponent has a surgical. If they don't, um, this is great. I have dredge 5 with 2 bridge from belows and a cabal therapy in the yard. We could have to deal with crop rotation as well. All right, uh, we could also just die to not hitting any creatures here. See how it goes. That's how it goes. I am right-clicking to concede. All right. It's one of those leaks. All right, this is a fine hand with multiple dredgers and multiple ways to get them into the graveyard and do things with them. I'm pretty happy with this hand. I think it's pretty good against blue decks. Um, although notably, we can't cast this tireless tribe that's in my hand. Uh, Wasteland would be the card that's theoretically best against me right now. Be leading on careful study here. Alright, I've gotten dazed. The most likely thing that we are currently playing against, given the metagame, is the blue-red, uh, what is it, Expressive Iteration Delver deck. <clears throat> Alright, don't mind this. I can start on Tireless Tribe, see if it resolves. Did not. <clears throat> That's fine. I can cast a breakthrough. If it resolves, awesome. If it doesn't resolve, I'll try again next turn. God damn it, Delver! Third third counter spell. Like I wanted it I wanted it to happen. <clears throat> Um, opponent could have found a wasteland there, yeah. Really? Over the Cephalid Coliseum? That's very surprising to me. Alright, this turn though. This turn I get to do shit. <laughs> All right. That's right. See, this is what I wanted earlier in this league. Like, I, I wanted to face, like, blue non-combo decks. And then we just, like, ran into a pile of combo. Um, Sideboard zero cards? Feels kind of like sideboard zero cards. Taking a quick look at some of the sideboards of these decks, I'm seeing about two surgical extractions and then one or two other graveyard hate pieces. Um, maybe a relic of progenitus, maybe a crafter's cage. Uh, there's some amount of variation in what these sideboards look like. I'm not really sure that I'm supposed to discard, or sorry, I'm not sure that I'm supposed to sideboard. Um, I don't think the ox is particularly 
good. Um, as we saw in earlier rounds, um, Cephalid Coliseum doesn't make red, and so flashing that thing back is a little bit harder without LEDs. So if I want to sideboard something, I think the Ox slot is totally fine. I could bring in Dread Return just as another way to sacrifice some of my stuff. Um, Dread Returning a Golgari Grave Troll is actually just totally reasonable in a matchup like this. They're not going to have too many ways to just get, you know, a 10-10 creature out of play. Um, I don't think I actually want to play any cards that answer maybe a one-of artifact card. Board this in over the Ox. And I think I do want all the Tireless Tribes. Uh, I think I'm going to keep everything else. I think this is okay. Like, maybe I'm supposed to drive the Ashen Rider because it can exile a whale or something, but eh. I also guess you could theoretically go down a Lotus Petal, but it helps me play around soft permission like days. I actually don't hate this hand. 12 hits for Drever Dredgers. And just a whole bunch of different ways to deploy cards. Um, I'm soft to a wasteland. I'll mulligan this, but if I hit 6, I might keep something that looks like this. So um, my opponent has gone down to five cards, and I'm still um, thinking about the second hand here. I just have the ability to cast Breakthrough a couple times in a row, but I'm really soft to a Wasteland. Um, and I have a bad Dredger. I'm going to go ahead and go to five. This is fine as a five. It's not overly exciting. But I like that I'm not just Stone Cold dead to a Wasteland here. We'll see if my opponent continues to go down. Like, it, it seems like they're very specifically looking for something. Uh, the Hogak being on bottom is a little awkward. But I think I'm supposed to keep the rest of this stuff. For sure. Um... I would like to do something on turn one that is not Breakthrough. Breakthrough is a much better follow-up play than it is a starting play. This is fine. I'm actually very happy to just cast this. Targeting myself? Maybe targeting myself. Turn it into another thing that my opponent has to deal with. Golgari. Oh, is it this space? Grave Dastral. I think it also would have been reasonable to uh, target my opponent and name Surgical Extraction. They hit surgical here. Pretty hot. Um, so the Eternal Glory podcast episode that I just uploaded, uh, just recorded yesterday, which should be live for you all now, um, featured a long discussion about expressive iteration. No bridges yet. Do I want to go ball therapy them prior to casting breakthrough, or do I just want to cast a big breakthrough? This is a weird turn. There's a lot of ways to play this turn. This Nargamiba is not doing me any favors currently. Let's go ball therapy them.
Yeah, they had force of negation. <clears throat> Alright, well, I will make them use it. This causes them to pitch a hole breacher, which is very good for me. I'm just going to cast this for x equals 0 and not take the extra point of life, because my opponent will counter this card. Yep. All right. So now, somewhat awkwardly, I don't have any dredgers in the graveyard, and I don't have any fuel for Icarid. Beautiful. I'm just going to discard two, two Grave Trolls. It makes me worse against Surgical Extraction specifically. But I think I need the gas in the yard. Oh, um, sure. I mean, we, I'll take this after those last couple of rounds playing against combo. My first hand here has no lands. Um, and I'm on the play. Go ahead and just junk this. The second hand is fine. I'll probably just pitch this bridge from below. There's a world where I don't pitch the bit bridge from below. No, no, I think I'm going to pitch the bridge from below. Zero? Just junk all this stuff and plan on activating Cephalid Coliseum. Or one, so I can keep another breakthrough. Now let's let's do zero. Not the best. I was uh, very much hoping to hit another dredger in there. Like, if I miss on this next dredge and I get wastelanded, I'm pretty boned. Unstompy? Grenosphere. All right, um, do this now while I'm guaranteed to hit one dredger. And then I can dredge it again in my draw step if I miss. Okay, so did not hit another dredger. All right, the little Golgari thug that could has not... Oh, okay, there we go. Two Stinkweed Imps, that's fine. I have a lot of fuel for an Icarid if I find one. Scalding Tarn. Would be playing against a blue-red Splinter Twin deck. Um, could be playing against the... Oh, what's the thing that lets you cheat the suspend spells? Could be playing against that. Okay, there's two Icarids. Now I have gas. Um, I don't really have any decisions here. I just have to pass the turn. Ant Cabal Therapy with Atrinus here in play. I think I will just fold to uh, something like an Instaring Bridge if my opponent is a Karn deck. Need information about what exactly my opponent is doing. 
Um, they need to do something big fast, though. So I'm going to hit them for 7 this turn. And then make at least 2 zombies and do it again the next turn. My opponent just passed their turn. Oh, a Hogak. Now I can cast that and not risk running into a Hull Breacher in combat? Does that sound good? Uh, actually, I can't do that because of Tronosphere, right? No, I can't do that because of Tronosphere. Believe. I guess this could technically run into like a pester mite. I gave up the six damage this turn, uh, but as a result, I am just going to have, I believe, lethal damage next turn. Yeah, I have 17 damage next turn. Uh, well, plus the Icarids. Uh, so, short of maybe a, uh, an ensnaring bridge, I should just have this game on lockdown. Alright, my opponent is playing a deck. Um, what is good against a deck? Probably Nature's Claim. I think I'll want Nature's Claim, Dread Return, and Ashen Rider over... Maybe Ox. Let's assume Chalice is in their deck and trim some one drops. We'll trim the ones that we can't cast off Cephalid Coliseum. Um, it also could be reasonable to trim one Golgari Thug instead of Tireless Tribe. I think the Lotus Petal's still good. Kind of. Like, it helps me cast a breakthrough for X equals 1 so that I can still dump stuff if my opponent chalices. Um, but not having LEDs here kind of sucks because LED is something that doesn't run into chalice and can dump your hand into the graveyard. Um, let's, let's start out here. Like, it's possible I want Wisp Mare as well. My opponent will be a Leyline deck if they're playing Trina Spirit. Yeah, let's uh, do that. And I'm okay if I'm wrong. But I, I want to have that Ashen Rider. Um, this hand is... Fine, I will keep this. I don't have an answer to a ley line, but my opponent did not have ley line. Do I just want to hard discard Golgari Grave Troll so I don't run into counters? No, I'd like to have two Putrid Imps in play for Hogak reasons. Got a surgical. So I have six cards in graveyard. That means I can just cast a Hogak, which would be cool. I lose an Icarid in process, but I would have a an eight eight. That's pretty cool. Uh, 
Oh, I can also just like discard this Narc Amoeba. Now I can leave. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. I can leave one Putrid Imp as food now. Why did my opponent keep their hand? Like, are you, are you just, like, waiting on an ensnaring bridge or something? I legitimately do not understand. Yeah, this turn is going to be fire. I just get to Cabal Therapy a million times here. Through the breach and sneak attack will be my next names. Actually, is that true? Yeah, that should be that 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 should be fine. That should win. Yep, I could technically, like, discard both of these and also make a large Grave Troll, but seems... Well, actually, it's not even a large Grave Troll. Yeah, we can, uh, we can pass the turn here. Like, I just have Lethal. Alright, uh, we did the thing towards the end of the league. Um, let's pull up the deck list and give some overall thoughts. Um, let's try to get all the players on screen here. So I feel like we're very bad against opposing combo decks. And I think part of the reason is because LED isn't in this deck list. We lose out on a couple of things by missing LED. Number one, we miss out on another zero cost way of getting cards into the graveyard. Number two, since we're not more red focused with Faithless Looting, we also don't get to flash back the Faithless Looting. And so like Faithless Looting is just a better card than Careful Study in many ways. The biggest upside of Careful Study is that it is blue, and hence you can cast it off of Cephalid Colosseum. So I think we miss out on a little bit of ability to grind and dig specifically for answers to uh, graveyard hate cards that stick on the battlefield. I think we lose out on some speed versus combo, and I think our Ox is considerably worse without access to LED to help fuel it. Um, because as we saw, there's a lot of times where I either have like one land or two lands and one of them is Cephalid Coliseum in an opener. And on those hands, the Ox doesn't really do anything. And the LED gives you another way to utilize the Ox. Um, so I don't think this is a bad deck list. Like I think we got paired against a lot of combo and we weren't particularly good against it. Um, but I don't think this deck list is bad. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, I'm 
I'm fine with the sideboard. I'm, I'm not overly excited by it. I don't look at this and go like, that's the perfect sideboard or anything. But I feel like we had reasonable options for every round. Um, I do sort of feel like I want a third nature's claim effect because Wisp Mare only hits enchantments. It, it doesn't hit something like a Graph Digger's Cage. Um, so I might um, make a change to get one more of these effects in here. Um, but overall, um, I enjoyed the league. We, we turboed through it, and I hope you had fun. Um, remember, if you want to get your deck on stream, donation information is always in the video description, as is the deck list if you want to try this one out yourself. You know, for your dredge fans out there, keep on dredging. Somebody's got to be the bad guy and make a bunch of zombies. Why not you?